Review, 2024 Maserati Gran Turismo Tests, The True Believers I'm jet-lagged, but it's all good. I'm in the pocket of a sleek, leatherline four-seater, flipping its shift paddles to goose its twin-turbo V6, strafing the countryside northwest of Rome. I'm all, oh, look, there's an olive grove and oh, look, a thousand-year-old aqueduct. Meanwhile, I'm hoovering up pavement like the Italian cream buns at the Colosseum Cafe when not being squeezed into a half-lane by wandery Iveco box trucks. 48 hours earlier, I'd been filing my taxes and scooping the litter box. Gran Turismo? You bet your meritazzo it is, notwithstanding the joys of 1099 INT forms and all. The Maserati Gran Turismo has been touring in style for decades, with a lineage that traces back 75 years to the A6 1500, until now powering its gorgeous body with scintillating gas engines. Today it's one of a dying breed, few cars put the Grand in touring anymore, and for every flawless descendant like the Lexus LC, there are the ones that got away, like the soon-to-be-deceased Jag F-Type. Maserati hopes to fend off the same fate with a wrench it's tossing in the traditional formula, a battery-powered version dubbed the Falgor, which synthesizes some of the waffling drive-by sounds of the Neptuno twin-turbo V6, while putting the gas version on the trailer with scorching EV acceleration that jams batteries in places where twisting and combusting used to take place. It's eerily quiet, it's relentlessly quick, it's entirely without precedent. The Falgor is a rather dramatic departure. Will it stick? Or will traditionalists starve it off in favor of that waffling Neptuno V6? 2024 Gran Turismo, Curves, Controlled. To massage that transition, the Gran Turismo style changes only subtly from the previous version, which last was sold in 2019. It stands in a classic touring car contrapposto, with a long hood, a short deck lid, maximally swole fenders, and ticks and stripes of metallic trim to draw attention to the most sculptural passages of its body. It sits lower than before, which translates into a lower seating position for driver and front passenger, and it's also wider, but the classic elements fall into place with a natural grace, from the Trident badge in its slim oval grille to the trim LED taillights. Forward angled fender vents are a love them or leave them detail, we assign them a heart emoji. Trophios wear some lily gilding carbon fiber trim. The Gran Turismo's cabin impanels digital screens in its tech forward transformation. A 12.2-inch digital gauge display pairs with a 12.3-inch infotainment touchscreen, which sits above an 8.8-inch climate control touchscreen. It doesn't chuck the past entirely in the bin. Glorious textures polish the cockpit to a sheen, aluminum grills for speakers fit beautifully in an interior that even digitizes the round clock that studs the center of the dash, while the lower dash wears diamond-slitted scars that add a dash of style to some otherwise plain expanses of trim. Minus some shiny plastic steering wheel switches, it's an artful workplace. 2024 Gran Turismo, Rip, Snort, Slice With the MC20 Supercar's 3.0-liter twin-turbo V6 nestled in its engine bay, the gas-powered Gran Turismo roars forward with a hovercraft-style exhaust note that fits the end of its internal combustion era. In the MC20 the Neptuno engine gets more power and dry sump lubrication, in the Gran Turismo Medina it spins out 490 horsepower and, in the Trofeo, a Specchamp 550 horsepower. Paired with the standard paddle-shifted 8-speed automatic and all-wheel drive, Maserati claims a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 3.5 seconds for the hotter Trofeo, which seems out of reach when activating the GT's beast mode through the plastic transmission buttons on the dash, or when considering its relatively light curb weight that nonetheless checks in at 3,957 pounds, but comes into cannon quick focus once you stomp the gas and unleash its raucous, war wagon powertrain. Channeling the best of the free revving V6 to the wheels takes little work. Finding the ideal drive mode, that's a snap too. Skip the comfort mode unless you're on a 100 mile highway chase. Otherwise, the Gran Turismo's default GT mode cuts down on the exhaust snarl below 5,000 RPM while it strikes the responsive midpoint in shift quality. There's sport for aggro exhaust sounds and rifle quick shifts, or Corsa, where all the slack filters out of the drivetrain and the traction and stability control systems shake their heads and walk away. I sampled Corsa briefly, spooled out kilometers of side roads in GT mode, 
but kept returning to sport to settle the Gran Turismo in its happiest mode. It's less about the drivetrain and its light touch steering than about the suspension setup. In comfort, the stiff dampers, big staggered 20-inch front and 21-inch rear wheels, with 265-30 front and 295-35 rear tires, and a softly set air suspension jittered over small potholes and generated head toss. In sport, with its air springs suitably firm, the Gran Turismo resolved almost every pavement quibble neatly, getting into a groove at moderate to high speeds, smoothing it out and giving it even-keeled grip. Gran Touring Cuffing Season the Gran Turismo is a big boy, at about 195.5 inches long, about the size of a Lucid Air, with a 115.3-inch wheelbase. Maserati promises for large adults can fit inside, and a quick test of the backseat proved that true, with 6-footer in front of 6-footer. Who'd want to ride in back is anyone's guess, given the sensory pleasures of everything experienced in row 1. The front seats take some finagling to find their sweet spot, and the seats have very firm cushions, but they adjust in all the right ways, with lumbar boosting and waist cinching controls available at a tap on the lower console screen. Maserati dresses the cabin in Nutella brown ash trim, with perforated black leather ribbed in yellow or red or gray, or in red or white leather if you're daring. The real packaging surprise? A truly useful trunk, with enough room for at least three wheeled bags, as either a Medina or a Trofeo, the Gran Turismo has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. A sybaritic 14-speaker Sonus Faber sound system comes standard, with a 19-speaker setup on the options list, along with a head-up display and a rear camera mirror. All cars come with automatic emergency braking, a surround-view camera system, and active lane control. Yet to come are the Gran Turismo convertible, called Gran Cabrio in some markets, and the Falgor, the battery electric Gran Turismo that will give Maserati a unique way to core sample its owner's preferences. Falgor EV, a test of the true believers. Maserati will use Falgor on all of its EVs, including upcoming electric versions of the Grey Kale crossover and MC20 supercar. The Gran Turismo is the names and ideas maiden voyage, and it comes wrapped in even more fetching finishes among them, coppery paint on the body and brake calipers, wheels that look like wound motors, and a denim and ivory interior two steps beyond fabulous. What's missing is the Natuno's chatty exhaust. In its place, Maserati subs in a synthesized soundtrack called from inverter and electric motor noises, and amplified subtly inside the cabin. It's an EV, and noises aside, it's otherwise nearly impossible to tell it apart from the gas-powered car. That's intentional, Maserati engineers say, because the transition to electric propulsion will be a complicated topic for a brand with heritage so steeped in motorsports. Press the start button and the Gran Turismo Falgor does a digital wink to acknowledge you as the driver, then, silence. Nothing seems different in the cockpit, because its 92.5 kWh battery pack takes the place of gas propulsion bits, from the engine to the differentials. Polish-sourced LG Chem batteries form a T-bone tucked into the driveline tunnel and stacked up behind the rear seats, adding at least 1,300 pounds to the body, for a total of about 4,850 pounds, while improving weight distribution to 50,50, versus the gas car's 53,47 split. Three motors, one in front, two in the back, team with the batteries and an 800-volt architecture to generate 760 horsepower and, maybe most importantly, a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 2.7 seconds and a top speed of 199 miles per hour. That's with more left in the system, engineers say the motors in the car are inverter limited and can spin out up to 300 kilowatts, 402 horsepower each. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.